Welcome to Movie World Plus, the place where we talk movies plus streaming. I'm Andy Signor, and I can't be the only one who left, don't worry, darling, this weekend, completely baffled. Oh, we are going to break down all these plot holes, that ending. We are going to spoil it all. In fact, I'm going to be ripping it to shreds. Before I get there, though, I thought it'd be wise to recap everything up until this point. What is this film? What's going on? All right, well, if you watch me over on my other channel, Popcorn Planet, we broke down a lot of the drama behind this film. I'll be honest, before all the drama, I had seen the trailer for this film and I thought, okay, that could be cool. I had no issue with Olivia Wilde. I liked Booksmart. I was going in open-minded. Uh, but then the drama started happening and it was very clear that Olivia Wilde, I don't think, was being honest. So much so that Shia LaBeouf came out of cancellation, even though, look, thoughts on Shia LaBeouf aside, he's a wonderful actor. I think we can agree on that. Uh, he is currently going through trial. We'll see what happens. He has a right to defend himself back. I know a lot of people don't like him, but he came out with receipts to really show that Olivia Wilde was lying. She was sort of bringing him up to just cause more publicity and knock him down even harder, and then began to just completely disrespect actress Florence Pugh in the middle of it all. Again, take your thoughts of Shia and put them aside if you can. Olivia Wilde just came across as a lying, narcissistic bully, in my opinion, and it really made my interest in the film lower significantly. In fact, so much so, I didn't want to buy a ticket to this movie. I didn't buy a ticket to this movie. Don't worry, darlings. I bought a ticket to Top Gun Maverick, which is still my favorite theater movie I've seen in years. Bought a ticket to that and snuck into this so I could make sure to not encourage Olivia Wilde financially with all the drama that she's been spewing. So all that said, I, look, I wanted to like this movie when I first saw the trailer. The drama has now given me pause. I assure you, I went into this movie open-minded. And I will say, Florence Pugh is fantastic. Regardless of the film, she stands out. She does her best. She's great. There are also a few really good uh, visual moments, I must say, uh, that look pretty good. But overall, this whole thing, before I get into spoilers, I'll warn you before I get there, this whole thing feels just like an HBO Max series that should have just been released as an eight-episode thing that you know a few people binged, maybe liked, and then completely forgot about a week later. That's what this this is really is. There's nothing special about it. We've seen it before. It's really a like Stepford Wives remake directed by bad M. Night Shyamalan is really what this film is. So much in, 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 in common with really bad M. Night Shyamalan movies. I would say not maybe as poorly directed or scripted, but very close. And the twist at the end, which I will get to and spoil for you in a minute, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And the more I've actually looked into this film after seeing it, I'm even more frustrated by Olivia Wilde and everything about it. So, all right, what is this film about? Don't Worry Darlin' is the film, okay? Uh, Don't Worry Darling stars uh, Florence Pugh as Alice. And uh, her husband, Jack, played by Harry Styles, uh, are in this sort of 1950s utopia. Uh, they, you know, she gets to s stay at home and, you know, clean and shop and cook and gossip with the other ladies, uh, all getting ready for their men to come home uh, and while he goes off to work during the day with all the other men in unison to go off and work for the mysterious Project Victory. And now it's all run by the leader, Frank played by Chris Pine. But throughout all of this, it's just very clear something is off. Any viewer with a brain will know, okay, clearly this isn't what it's supposed to be. What's actually going on? And you're sort of just waiting for it. First two acts, you know, take their time to try to build the suspense that we're all sort of waiting, like what's actually happening? What's going on? Uh, and so you're either going to be connected right away and sort of surprised, or you're going to be like me, or it's like, okay, I get, okay, I get it. Are we going to get to the like what what's really happening type of moment? Uh, she starts to begin, you know, figuring out something's wrong. She's challenging the world she's in, uh, and then she's constantly being told she's crazy. Uh, it's just gaslight. The movie is really what this movie is. Uh, and there's just one interesting plot point that I really did actually enjoy regarding Chris Pine and Florence Pugh at this dinner table moment, where you know while she's sort of challenging the world around her, you know they have this toe to toe moment. That was like, at a, for a second, I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to like this more than I thought. But then the film completely loses its way. It just spirals out of control in the last third act. And there's just no turning back. There are no answers given. It, there, I mean, there, there are answers given, but none of them make sense. Honestly, I've been trying to think if I can think of another movie that has as many plot holes as this movie does. And I'm having trouble there. You guys will have to tell me in the comments down below if you've seen it, what I'm... But I, it, this movie is tough. While it's like serviceable and stuff I've seen before and 
for a little while, I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm a little bored, but Florence Pugh is keeping me engaged. Uh, overall, it's just, it's rough. It's the, it's rough. I'm trying to look through some of my notes here. Styles, Harry Styles, let's just say when he has a serious drama moments, my audience laughed. They gently, like, literally, I'm not trying to be mean to Harry Styles. I found him mediocre at best. I didn't find him awful, but I just definitely didn't think he was good. Love him or hate him, Shia LaBeouf would have acted rings around it and brought so much more nuance and interesting scariness and more to the character that Harry just doesn't have. It's a few moments where he gets to scream and whatnot, but it's still very unclear who his character is. And I feel like he could have done more even with his own performance to help us find that. And he never gets a chance to. It's just badly. He's just, he's not very good. He's not terrible, but he's just not good enough. He's not experienced enough. Chris Pine is trying. I'll give him that. Chris Pine's trying his damnedest, but he's, you know, the script is just so bad for him. The things he's saying are trying, it feels more like the author, the, the screenwriters are trying hard to say something important. And in fact, they're trying to say something important against Jordan Peterson, which was, <laughs> this is what I found after the fact. Chris Pine's whole leader character is based on Jordan Peterson, a hero to the incel community. Now, this is not not trying to spoil anything. I'm just saying this is what Olivia Wilde uh, told Maggie Gyllenhaal in an interview. I found this recently. Uh, incels are basically disenfranchised, mostly white men who believe they're entitled to SEX from women, Wilde explained. Uh, after noting Pines, a character is inspired by Peterson, and they believe that society has now robbed them and the idea of feminism is working against nature and that we must go back to correct place. They're actually succeeding in many different ways. But this guy, Jordan Peterson, is someone that legitimizes certain aspects of their movement because he's a former professor, he's an author, he wears a suit. So they feel like this is a real philosophy that should be taken seriously. Uh, Wilde said she did a deep dive on the disenfranchised world of white men on the internet before filming started and even logged into 4chan. I have a sick fascination with cults. <laughs> Okay, look, uh, and Chris did apparently as a favor, and then he really ran with it. And to his credit, he ran with it. Uh, this scene with him at the dinner scene is probably my favorite in the film, but then I feel like the script and Olivia had just no idea where to really go with it. It doesn't go where it needs to go to really pay off, in my opinion, in my opinion. And it really, I really struggled with it. I struggled. This was, and, and that whole Jordan Peter. look, hello, again, I, I don't like Jordan, a lot of stuff Jordan Peterson says, but He's also said some interesting things to just write this weird parody of Jordan Peterson feels like more of what they're going for than actually writing an interesting character who's actually like challenging and like, you know, what's going on. This character is underdeveloped. He just is most every character. I feel like in this film is underdeveloped and that's the problem with this film. It's not because I'm a misogynist or an incel. It's because the script is just bad. It's bad. I, 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 the, my favorite part of the film is Florence Pugh because she's acting her damnedest given the poor source material. So, um, so what is, you know, what is Project Victory? What is this big twist? I'm about to spoil it for you. If you don't want to be spoiled, you want to go see the film. Well, go see it before you leave for spoilers. Hit the subscribe button. Will you help me in movie world? I want to get more content here. Hit the bell. Smash that like button. I do want to get more into telling uh, more movie stories here. So leave a comment. Let me know. Now you've been warned. Spoiler alert. Are you ready for this? I don't think people are ready for this. <laughs> I mean, you can read it elsewhere if you really cared, but here we go. The big twist. <laughs> I wish I, I think there's a picture of Harry Styles with the big twist. I should have had this. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I find it quick enough? Uh, I, I, man, I, <laughs> I, I can't, Oh man, oh, sorry. All right, the big twist. I'm looking twice. There it is. Okay, I found it. I found it. Here's the big twist, guys. Harry Styles is an incel working at home. He's got like a weird beard and hair, and he's he's working at home listening to a Jordan Peterson like podcast. He's uh, in flashbacks. We learn his wife. Florence, who works at the hospital and, and works a lot of hours, comes home tired and doesn't want to have sex with him. So he's frustrated by that because he's always on the computer listening to his incel podcast led by Frank, the Chris Pine character. And so uh, he's, oh, he's what a, what a character. So he's following the shady podcast of Chris Pine and somehow... I guess the podcast has inspired him to be a part of Project Victory. And Project Victory involves, and this is the twist, 
that Florence Pugh is drugged on her bed against her will, locked up, you know, there with, uh, you know, unconscious with an IV drip that's, and then weird, like, clockwork orange style eye devices that are propping her eyes open to have a virtual reality, like, screen over them. So she's, like, there with her eye being watched. And they cut to Harry Styles, like, putting eye drops in and checking the, the IV. And the <laughs> and so that's the pullback that she's in this dream world. Now, that alone could have been creepy and interesting. But then they explain that, you know, <laughs> that Harry did this because she was so unhappy. And uh, Harry's character is like screaming, I did this for you. You're so miserable working on that all the time. When I go off to work in the virtual world, I have to go to my real job, my real nine to five to pay for all this. You should be grateful. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. So again, guys, I'm sorry. He's literally lo then logs in like next. She's literally in this bed like, and then he goes to work and while she's watching a VR simulation and then he logs in himself and gets to be the perfect version with her where they can, that's, you know, he gets to, uh, they don't even, what's also funny is he never, they never have SEX. He, he just always, how do I say, um, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? You know, he goes to the buffet. Uh, I don't know how to say it nicely. He's always performing uh, different, you know, just on her and they don't even really seem to ever do anything else. So he's, that's it. He's always pleasing her and everything else. He's, you know, cause he's an incel, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but he's working all day to pay for this whole experiment. And so the men in this world, they go to work nine to five when they're driving off to the secret job that you think is some big weird thing they're doing. All the women in the world are all like, what are our men doing? We're not allowed to ask what's going on. They're logging offline to go work in the real world so they can keep their women logged in and unconscious and in this mystery world where they cook and clean all day for their men who come home afterwards to be there. So I guess it was like the men who are going to work all day. I guess what they're is like, well, I can come home to my happy wife in a VR simulation that I've done against her will is what's like sort of happening. And they don't do a very good job explaining it. Like I'm trying my best to figure it out, but I think that's ultimately what the movie's trying to say. But again, it, it makes no sense that the twist is rushed to so much that I'm like, how is she a, a lot on her bed all day? Is he like moving her muscles around to keep her from like, you know, damaging her body and getting what's uh, that what's the term when you can't move things uh does she have like no family or co-workers or you know even just like a landlord or somebody at her hospital who doesn't like want to be like where did this woman go where is she we haven't heard from her no they're just living in this dingy apartment where she's clockwork garnished with a simulation of her living in a 1950s uh, world so she could be nice and, you know, always want her husband. Uh, and then uh, why does he do this? Like, what is, why? So we can hang out with her in this fake video game and, and then get it in, in, the, in the fake world. It's like, if you're going to come up with this idea, like, why not, like, do a thing where she's, like, actually doing it to really make it even, like, 10 levels creepier? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so this guy's unhappy. His wife's not putting out. So let's like show him as this villain. I just can think of like 10 different better versions that are going to convey that and make it even more sinister. Like Midsommar, Mier, which is another like gaslighting movie done so much better and so much creepier. Like that's sort of like, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like the script, the direction really goes nowhere to really <laughs> convey what this creepy guy will do or what his motivations are. They don't explain it. And then in the movie, Olivia Wilde is also there. Uh, do I have a shot of her? I don't know if I grabbed a picture. Uh, Olivia Wilde's also there. And uh, her character knows. They reveal sort of early on. Sorry, I thought I had it. There it is. She's there. She's like under this annoying character. And they reveal at the end of the movie that she knows. And she's choosing to stay there because her children in the, in the reality are not alive in the real world. And so it's like this whole other challenging. It's very WandaVision-esque, or even Wanda's like, why am I here in this fake world if you don't exist? It's just, it's weird. And then she turns happy at the end. For those of you who saw it, why did she do that? What was her motivation? It made no sense. Uh, <laughs> what was with uh, the Harry Styles jig? <laughs> There's a scene where Chris Pine's giving the big speech and then brings... Harry up to like, yeah, this is we, we're in control, we're in control, and then dance for him, and then Harry does like a jig for everybody, and everyone's all happy. 
<laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. And speaking of Frank, like, I wrote a lot of these down because I'm trying to, like, is he real? Like, sorry, is he? Why is he in? The, what is his motivation in this? Does he get to, like, fool around with the women? Like, they don't even allude to that, which would have been 10 times creepier. Like, is he just a program? Is he logged in every day after his podcast? Like, who's, how did they fund this without getting caught? Did he actually die at the end? Why did his wife do that? It made no sense. His wife surprises everybody and kills him at the end when you think things are going to get interesting. And then she's like, my turn. Does that mean she's taking over? Or my turn to get out of here? They say like only the men can die in the simulation. There's a moment where Olivia Wilde's character warns Florence, you have to run because she accidentally kills Harry Styles. And, and then as, as, as the memories are coming back, which again makes no sense, she, so she hits him with a glass and he dies in the simulation and Olivia comes in to be plot armor to be like, if men die here, they die in the real world and you have to run. They're going to kill you if you don't get out. And so then there's a mad dash to get Florence Pugh as she's like rushing out of here to like, you know, log back out, log, log, log offline. Uh, but then she logs offline and they don't show her waking up. You hear like, <gasps> and then you're like, did she just wake up next to Harry Styles, dead body? And then, then what? Like we're setting up a sequel to this. No, thanks. Don't worry. I don't want that. What? Like <laughs> what was the plane real? Like, what was the whole plane scene? There's a scene where she walks off to see a... They don't explain that. Uh, wh why, how did she get out? Did she die? Did she get out before? Is she going to wake up next to the dead body? I have so many questions. Will she remember everything? If you're going to make a dream wor VR world for incels, why this one? Why not make it for uh, other, you know, more sinister uh, people? I, there's so many questions that I just don't understand. And it's like, it's all just feels like some weird, boring gaslighting video game. I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Why on earth? What is the point of this whole experiment? What is the point of this thing? Why did Chris Pine's character make it that way? Why would Harry Styles pay to put himself in a world that does this? Why wouldn't they have done more sinister, crazy things? This movie has no point. It makes no sense. An allegory because they didn't like Jordan Peterson. So men want their women at home. I didn't even get that vibe because it felt like Harry Styles' character wanted to take care of his woman. So which was it, Olivia? Make up your damn mind. This movie made no sense. It is such a mess. And it makes total sense why Shia LaBeouf bounced. I'm just, it's trying to say so much and look cool while doing it that it ultimately says nothing at all. I was so frustrated. Uh, but all that said, I got to say, kudos to Florence Pugh. She does her damnedest in a terrible script that's badly directed. And uh, she, like, without her, this movie would be embarrassing. For my, in my opinion, I've seen this done better. It goes nowhere. I don't understand. It leaves so many plot hole questions. When this movie comes out, I'm doing a full on question run about how any of this made any damn sense. Because I'm telling you, it doesn't make any damn sense. They rush that last act and they completely just. I, <laughs> it's, it's so frustrating. So, guys, don't worry, darling. It's getting some raves, or not raves, but like a tent buzz because it's like all the drama and there's this stuff. But I'm telling you guys, oh my God, definitely. If you're really like, I'm fascinated, Andy, I need to see it. Please wait till it's on streaming at least uh, because you're going to want to rewind and be like, wait, what? What? It, it, it makes no sense. And if I'm crazy and you're saying, no, Andy, all the things make sense, who are the red people? Who are these guys in red suits? Tell, wait, wait, what? Are they incels undercover? Like, who are there getting paid to be there to like take the people off? Who is this? So this is an all weird cult for what? What was the goal? Why were there rumbles in the desert? What, what were those earthquakes that was never addressed? So much of this damn movie never is answered or made sense. It doesn't make any sense. Why would Chris Pine create this? Is he actually there? Why? What were the character's goals? How did they afford it? What? I mean, <laughs> I'm having a uh, uh, spiraling myself. I feel like Florence Pugh trying to come out of the don't worry, darling. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thing, but uh, oh my god, guys, did you see it? Am I alone in my crazy feelings to this? I want to hear your thoughts down below. Make sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for all likes, and get this out there. Can you explain this plot? I don't think anyone can. Damn you, Olivia.